Today I want to show you a very instructive game or tactical puzzle from a game. In this position it is obvious that white has an advantage. White has developed everything, the king is safe on g1 and in contrast black hasn't developed much, only the two knights. So the question is how white should continue. If white doesn't find anything he can play the move a5 which is guaranteeing him a solid advantage. However, the question is if white can already win by force. And before we answer this question, let's take a close look into the position. So we said white developed everything. The rooks aren't connected yet, but this can be improved. But on the other hand, black's knight on f6 is unprotected. Black's knight on c6 is protected. However, there's also the a8 rook and the bishop is already on g2. Looks very dangerous. Another disadvantage of black, the rook on h8 is undefended. And also very bad, the king on e8 is still in the center. So everything tells us there must be something for white, but the question is what? Well, we see there are three issues on the king side alone so it's probably connected to something with the king side. But also this knight on c6 can be a target. And also this rook is bad as we said. So the solution here is opening up the diagonal against the knight on c6. Because after d takes e5, white can just play queen to f3, attacking the knight on f6 and also on c6. Black is forced to block this attack by knight to d5, removing or intercepting with one of the attacked pieces. Now white continues with knight takes d5, e takes d5. And instead of taking on d5 immediately, white has a very nice move, queen to f6. Now the rook is attacked. And additionally, there's pressure on f7 and also pressure against the c6 knight. So rook to g8. If white loses time, maybe a move like bishop to g7 might be not that pleasant. So white just takes on d5, increasing the pressure against the knight on c6. Bishop to b7 played. And now the question white must ask him is how to continue. And the way white continued is just thinking which pieces are not developed yet or not taking part in the game. And if you take a look at the rook on f1 or a1, you see neither of them is participating in the game. So white played a5 and after knight takes a5, rook takes a5 followed. An exchange sacrifice giving up the rook for a knight, actually also a pawn. So b takes a5. But what did white achieve? Well, white exchanged the c6 knight, one of the few developed pieces of black. And additionally, also the rook on a1, which wasn't really playing in the game, is gone. So these are the advantages of white. The disadvantage is the material upon and the exchange is gone. However, white has a very active position. And before taking on b7, White wants to improve the bishop. Well, let's take a look at this. This is very nice and queen takes e5 is also a very nice position for white, obviously. However, white can play much better because bishop to b6 drives the queen to d7. Every other move loses immediately. Queen to c8 is checkmate. Queen to e7 loses due to bishop takes e7 and bishop takes b7 and the skewer rook b8 doesn't work because of bishop c6 check an intermediate move giving white enough time to remove the bishop from b6 in the next move when it is his turn so queen to d7 is pretty much forced and now you see e5 is weak first white takes on b7 Queen takes b7 and now queen takes e5 check. And as you can see after bishop to e7, the queen on b7 is attacking the b6 bishop. 
so it looks like the bishop must be removed. This is only partly true because a move like rook e1 makes the bishop on b6 taboo due to mate on e7. Not very pleasant for black. And black wants to capture this bishop on b6, so therefore he plays king to f8 and now gains access to the g7 square. And this will also play a role later, but let's see. So it looks like the bishop must be removed. However, in worst case, we could just take here, but the thing is, well, after the queen took on b6, obviously, the thing is, white is down material. This is not going to be as pleasant. So what to do? Well, if you take a close look, you might see that the b6 bishop is well placed because the king on f8 isn't that safe. So therefore, white follows up with knight to c5 and now black can really not capture this bishop on b6 because of knight to d7 check. And if you think it's only about the queen, then you are wrong because queen takes e7 actually ends the game by checkmating. So again, white checkmate. Black found a last move here, which was f6, or last idea. And now, obviously, the queen goes to e6, gaining some white squares here and also here. However, the king might flee to g7 if white doesn't pay close attention. So black continued with bishop takes c5. And if you take the c5 bishop immediately back, then follows king to g7. And it's not so obvious if white is still winning. So this is very dangerous. Therefore, there's an intermediate move. Queen takes f6 check. Now there's only one legal move because this rook on e1 is playing in the game. So queen to f7. And here black resigned because of bishop takes c5 checkmate. This had won the game. Let me know what you think about the puzzle and the game.